Hey everybody, this is Garrett and Sita with another great podcast of Idea to Invention, a podcast for small businesses and inventors. And inventors. And you seriously got the radio voice on for that one. No, I did. Yes, you did. I just said, hey, I don't everybody. even know that you. I don't, Maybe I just don't know I do it. Right. Because I think you get natural. excited and you go, I do. <laughs> but I didn't know. <laughs> hey, oh, this is like a game show. That's what it is. It's game show voice. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll continue. So that's your next calling because, you know, your mom thinks you are, um, what's his name? Um, they, um, the brother just, Wayne Brady? Yes. No. Which, but anyway, anyway. so we, we are here, right? We are here with Stephanie, what? Stephanie Taylor of, because I want to get it right, HMO Heaven and Rent to Rent Success. Awesome. And she is, so she's one of those that, um, She's in the UK, and her accent is absolutely beautiful. I know you probably get tired of people saying that, but I really could, like, listen to you just all day. Just like, it and like, just right, have, right. Even if she was like cussing me out, I just want to hear her <laughs> speak <laughs> with her accent. <laughs> so, yeah. Stephanie, instead of us reading your bio, I like it better if you tell us, you know, more about you, what, where you came from, what you started and all that good stuff. So we're going to hand it over to you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It is amazing to be here. I am so delighted to be on the show with y'all. All y'all. <laughs> I had to get a y'all in. Right. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I, can, I, can, I can do my y'all. <laughs> y'all all. Anyway. <laughs> um, so as you said, yeah, I am co-founder with my sister, Nikki. So we're running a family thing as well. Oh, yay. We're sister Nikki. Uh, oh, I know. Sister... I, I'm the important one. Oh, okay, well, then never mind. <laughs> we understand. Sister Nikki has her place. Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, um, as, as she would probably put it, I'm the one who gets all the glory. She's the one who does all the work. That's uh, kind of how we divide okay. it up. <laughs> okay, got you. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so we, we're co-founders of HMO Heaven, which is a, a real estate management business. And we specialize in transforming house shares from hellish to heavenly. So that's why ah. it's called HMO Heaven. And I know that in the U.S. that HMOs are something to do with healthcare, care. Right. But in the U.K., it stands for House of Multiple Occupation. Oh. A house share. Oh. House share. Right. Uh -huh. so okay. It's like a multi-unit. It's a multi-level, what do you call a it? A multi-unit multi dwelling or yeah. whatever. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit like friends. So everyone has their own room and then they're sharing the kitchen and the bathroom. And it can be just as entertaining as friends as well. Sometimes for the right reasons, <laughs> sometimes for the wrong. A boarding house. That's what we call it here. A boarding house. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody has their own bedroom, but it's like a communicable kitchen mm -hmm. and sometimes bathroom right everything yeah. is shared yeah. living right yes okay yes. all right so keep going so oftentimes those uh, have properties those type of high shares they're affordable but they're not very nice and so our mission was to make them beautiful affordable homes people love to live in and so how it happened was it's a strategy where you can get started in in the property business with little money you've got recurring revenue you've got the names and addresses of your perfect customers and how it works is it's called rent to rent so you rent this big house you pay the owner a guaranteed rent mm -hmm. you do up the property and you charge your tenants a higher rent um, but still affordable and so it's a really incredible model and it can attract the wrong sort of people you know you hear in real estate that people are not always delivering but we do it in an ethical way where it's a win for the landlords who work with us it's a win for the housemates who live with us and it's a win for us so we're always delivering exceptional value and that's why HMO Heaven uh, has grown so quickly into the multi-millions in terms of the contracts that we have uh, in, a, in a short period of time. Okay, so ex explain again um, the, the the cycle. You said that, like, if, if Garrett and I wanted to become part of your program, are we, yeah. do we own the property, or will we ever own the property, or how does that work? Yeah. 
Yeah, great question. So what we're I've got we've got well we've got about three businesses, but the, with this business HMO Heaven we're just managing. So say. So we don't own those properties. We're managing those properties for other people, providing a really comprehensive service and giving guaranteed rent, no hassle. Guaranteed rent, freedom from tenant management and total peace of mind to the owners. We don't own the properties, but we can make money from other people's properties, but do it in an ethical way Mm -hmm. that feels really good for the owners and really good for us and really good for the housemates. So that's part one of the business. That's called, that business is called HMO Heaven. But for a lot of people, who might want to get into property, but might not have the money to put down yet to buy their own investment property. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rent to rent can be a great way to get started because you don't need a lot of money to start. You can start making money quickly. You can get involved in property. People can see you, you become more investable as a property person. And because we we've been doing it now for almost five years. And in that time, We've also bought properties that are worth over a million pounds now, and we've got 28 units, mixture of commercial units, um, uh, multi-unit blocks, like blocks of flats, um, some of the house shares that we talked about earlier, um, some conversions that we're converting uh, converting into flats. So... So we started off with the HMO Heaven management strategy where you don't own the assets and we've moved into the ownership of the asset strategy. But what has also been hugely exciting is that because, you know, I'm a normal person, I only got into this five years ago. I was just working nine to five and I had a kind of a bit of a a doddery start in life and not a very promising start, should we put it like that. people kept saying well how are you doing this Stephanie what are you doing what is it what do you do and I would go on do lives like this and uh, say look here's the house how it was before and uh, here it is now afterwards and this is what we're doing and this is how we're working it and because of that eventually that turned into a business as well and that's called rent to rent success and that tells women it tells people in general But I especially love working with women because I think that oftentimes we might not think we might have gotten into middle age because there's the people who are always going to be entrepreneurs. I wasn't one of them. You know, the people who are at school selling the tuck shop and selling rulers and pencils to people and all of that. I wasn't one of those. But um, in middle age, we we found this passion for business. And um, so I'm passionate also about sharing that with other people because you don't have to be the recipient. You can be the giver. Mm -hmm. You can be the creator. You can be the creator of the wealth. And I really think it's amazing for women especially because we've been used to managing households oftentimes. And if you can manage your household, you're not getting paid for that. But then with this property strategy, to do it to an exceptional level, you're managing a household in a really good way, using systems, and you're getting paid a lot of money to do it. And with that money, you can do things to, for your children's college fund, for your, for your retirement. You can buy your life back and live life on your terms. And so Rent Rent Success is sharing that, that how to do it in a way that's really simple for people to get started. Yeah, because women can multitask. That's the thing. Yes. That's the thing. (laughs) Yep. We can do about 17 things at one time and not skip a beat on all until we're tired. If if we're not tired, then we'll do we can do 10 things at a time. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if we are tired. So, so yeah. it looks like you had a question. I was going to ask a question. But no, you can I, ask your I, question. I was going to say that it sounds like the program is is almost like a, um, almost like a sublet that like what we mm-hmm. would do here in the states, to where if you rented a house, right, and that house had four bedrooms, mm-hmm. right, you just you just went and you went to this house, and um, and say the rent was a thousand dollars. Um, then what you would do is you would bring in three other folks to take up the three other bedrooms and charge right? them a little and charge and, them and, more and, and give char- them an upcharge, right? You give them upcharge of four fifty a room, mm-hmm. right? Then that way you now begin to your base of a, of a thousand for the rent is done. And then the, the extra you begin to, to pocket. I use as my own. Right. Is, am I explaining that process kind of similar? That's exactly right. The only thing is, um, 
that with subletting, it has a bad name because people often do it illegally without anybody knowing about it. So the way that we're talking about, obviously, is uh, all legal. And we've spoken to the owner and said, this is what we plan to do. Is that okay with you? And we've signed a contract together of how we're going to work together. So yeah, exactly what you said. Exactly what you said, Garrett. But that's great. It, but, it, it, but it also... It, it relieves the owner so much. It relieves much. the owner of, of so much it's stress about revenue. worrying about it. Right. Because cause your agreement, if I would imagine correctly, is your agreement includes the management of that property for the owner as well. Right. Yeah, with guaranteed rent. So if, you oh, know, one wow. of the big things about managing when you've got lots of different people is what about if there's a room empty for two months or three months or mm -hmm. two rooms or whatever, but they don't have to think about that. And the other thing is, if you have an agent manage your property, who's just on a percentage, often they're not managing it as diligently, because actually, they've got hundreds of properties. And they're getting a small percentage of each, and it doesn't really pay them to try and fill your rooms. Right. Um, it pays them more to fill other properties that are going to pay them more each month. And so with us, they get the full service, they get the guaranteed rent. And for some owners, that is worth more. Um, and oftentimes we can pay them more than what they were getting before because they weren't getting what they were supposed to be getting anyway, uh, because the properties were not being managed to the highest level. level. Right, right. So because they come in, there's a higher, you, the, the, the owner can demand a higher rent. Yeah. So because it's all beautiful now. Yep. Well, that's, mm. that's a really good idea. That's mm -hmm. a really, really good idea. So... Mm. How, because I, when I was reading through your bio, um, and I was really intrigued about how you started, and and, and I know you you partner with your your sister Nikki, and I'm just curious, right? Because then I mean, also you you talk about um, um, your struggle financially early on as a as yeah. a teenage single mom, and I was just yeah. really intrigued about how how you've come from that point to where you're at now and the fact that you're at a, you have a multi-million dollar uh, from a contract perspective type of business i'm just really intrigued about understanding how you got from where you from where you started as a teenage mom to now give us yeah. a snipsis of that snipsis <laughs> 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 oh, I like the radio voice. Uh, and Garrett, it's, it's, it's been a long and winding road. And now when I look back, I just think, gosh, it was so, it feels so easy now because of one, the one thing that's so important that people say all the time, but I never really truly understood in an implementation way is that your thinking is everything. Your thinking changes everything. And so a few years ago, um, I started living that way. Mm -hmm. And I started, you know, consciously choosing to have certain thoughts, not letting things slip onto default setting. Because my default setting was quite negative because part of part of the reason of being a teenage single mom in the first place, part of that was low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And then once you're there in that situation and then feeling not having that much confidence, not having so many qualifications, not being able to get a high paying job, doing these low paying jobs and leaving Alex with the nursery yeah. and then uh, getting out at 6 a.m. Yeah, it's a cycle. Of, the, mm -hmm. and, and you just, it's so many little cuts of humiliation. And then I, I eventually decided not to work because the nursery it wasn't treating him the way that I wanted to, to, to treat it. Mm -hmm. And also monetarily, it was only just about, I was only just about scraping my, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to put a few years in to being at home, looking after him. When he goes to school, I will go to work then, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so we did that. And I, I used to have to queue up every every two weeks to collect the money from the government then um i you call it you call it project so I, i'm not sure it was quite as uh, quite like that but it yeah. wasn't very much it wasn't very much money 42 pounds 
some pence a week. Oh, wow. And one of the things that I hated was going to the supermarket to get any food because I would have to take my calculator to make sure that whatever I'm putting in the basket, it's not going to go over because then you get to the till and people are looking at you as you're trying to. And it was just, it was just, I should have felt lucky that we had this thing where I could, you know, not work, bring up my baby. Mm -hmm. And, but I just felt ashamed. I felt ashamed mm -hmm. that I was standing in that queue. I felt ashamed that I was getting the money off the government. And I felt like less of a person. And I think that lasted with me a long, 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 uh, long time. And gradually over the years, I've reached different levels of consciousness. And then now I, I look back and I think, ah, oh, I wish I'd known those mind. I wish I'd known that it was mm. all, it was all inside me all along. And, and now life just feels so much, so much easy, easier. Yeah. It, it... But you wouldn't be who you are if you knew that then. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's that's yeah. the beauty of it all. It's like, yeah. you know what? You go through those. You go through those rough times to make you stronger and know that when rough times come now, you know, that's a piece of cake compared yeah. to yeah. what I've already been through. <laughs> so I got yeah. this. You because, know? I mean, in, in reality, right, you. You you probably you weren't ready mm -hmm. for the success that you're experiencing now. Right, right. You literally weren't mature enough um, to handle it if you would have gotten it back then. Because yeah. I believe the same thing, because even with us, we're not, yeah. you know, we're not fresh out of school. We didn't come, you know, most, most kids in their 20, 25, they're like, you know what, I don't really have to do college because <laughs> I got this entrepreneur mindset. I can start now, da, 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 yeah. da. And then we were like, you know what? People are, are like, because I it was one thing I was looking like looking at LinkedIn. Do you guys have LinkedIn over there too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. there was this article that was like this. This gentleman was saying, "I'm sick of seeing articles of forty under forty. What about the people who have lived their lives and are like, I need to see the top fifty over fifty? You know, that decided <laughs> yeah. to do something different than what they thought they were going to be, but they also, you know, lived life, had children." gone and had the peaks and valleys of mm -hmm. how life but still decided to take that entrepreneur route yeah. when you were not you didn't come from the mindset of you know what i, I don't have to go to college I, I have the i have the freedom and i have the you know i'm just just because i'm me i can right. be an entrepreneur so it's 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 with us it's like you know what if i had a if i had this opportunity when i was 35 i was so not ready not ready not ready at all to do and and even now some of the stuff i'm like i'm still not ready i gotta learn well, i gotta learn, learn a little <laughs> bit more before you know but, i mean but to be able to juggle so and you think about it as a business owner right there's mm. you're not just juggling one or two balls mm -hmm. you're juggling no. five to ten bro she a mama right I mean, that's that alone saying, right that alone. <laughs> and and so yeah at 35 your thought process wasn't even near mm -mm. what it is mm -mm. to be able to handle the stress the the responsibility that you now have and mm -hmm. you can walk through it your head up yeah juggling with no yeah. problem making yeah. it look easy yeah because we know how to fake it too we do better at faking it when we're older <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> the difference now is that i know that i can handle any problem because it's not just about what I know. I know that the answers are out there to right. any problem. Right. And it's just a different way of thinking, of not not thinking that I, I have to know everything because I, I, I used to think I couldn't be in business because I don't know about business and I don't know those people mm -hmm. and I don't know what those people do or how it all works. But then when I started thinking, okay, who do I know who or how could I find out about um, it just opens opens everything up. So I know that in our business, as it grows, we're going to have different problems we, that I won't be able to solve. But the answers are out there. The mentors are out there. The, the everything is out there. I only have to be resourceful. Yes. And I know that I can be resourceful. And so I know that therefore I can handle any problem. Mm -hmm. So as <clears throat> as a woman of color. Mm -hmm. in the UK 
Mm-hmm. And this is just a, a, a curious question because I, I know here here in the states uh, there is a um, an ongoing um, yeah. uh, thought that it's it's challenging number one of mm-hmm. a person of color to go into business and to be successful, mm-hmm. um, but number two is that a woman of color has mm-hmm. another layer of challenge, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. whether it's it's attaining financing. Um, mm-hmm. attaining the knowledge uh, to, to mm-hmm. help you, you know, grow your business and so forth. Um, mm-hmm. Is it the, do you have that same experience in the UK? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, people undervalue you, doubt you, uh, look down on you all the time, but I did the same to myself. So that is part of it uh-huh. is that you experience these things and, and you cut yourself right. down. And you think that's your you story too, right? Yes. You don't try, you Ooh. don't go for it. You think that's not for me, that's for other people, etc. So people don't even have to put you down because <laughs> right, you're putting already, yourself uh, down. And I'll and then speak. so so how I handle that now is I just I just notice it and let myself say, oh that hurt, but I don't let it stop me. Mm-hmm. I just make it mean me and carry on. And there's, there's all different ways it can happen because I actually had a friend who, uh, in inverted commas, who I, you know, we're, we're successfully running the property business, but we also started the online training business. And the online training business took off just, uh, you know, you're, you, you, you know about the online world, but it just phenomenally in, in my head uh, from the life, from the world that I came from. Um, so in the first year we made uh, into the six figures and then as it's gone on, it's, it's grown on from there. And so this person said to me, um, I shouldn't be, this is a friend, uh, a black friend. Um, I shouldn't be too interested in money. So I think even the people who are for you also don't want you to be too successful. They're okay. You have your nice little business. That's absolutely fine. But don't be too successful. Don't be too ambitious. Don't be too driven. Don't be too focused. When you think about it, I have not been driven, focused or anything. (laughs) Decades have passed me by. (laughs) And so I feel like uh, now now is the time. And I do feel excited. I do feel passionate. I do want to share this with, with, with other people, especially especially women of color, of course. There is no reason. First of all, I'm going to pray for that friend and, her, and the fact that um, <laughs> if you can still call her a friend, but um, yeah. there is no, and I, I think I, I, I hear what you're saying and I, I, I identify with what you're saying because it is hard to be as black people. I think culturally we have some issue with being proud of ourselves and giving each other that like stay as long as you stay in your place, mm-hmm. then I'm good with you. But it's like, no, we always should want everyone to lift to a higher place, to be, to always be yeah. and be encouraged. But to say, you know, what, don't, don't, are they going to say that to uh, whoever the L'Oreal family, don't get too big. <laughs> <You know. laughs> what the hell? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Because you want it. <laughs> right, right. Okay, I'm sorry. That was just my little <laughs> girlfriend thing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, so, because see, when you and I was re- reading your bio, and, and it when you talked about rent to rent to rent success, um, mm-hmm. now that you've explained it, how it's 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 really linked to your 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 first business. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've how so it's been five years since you started the first business. Mm-hmm. Um. What would you consider to be probably like your top three keys of success that have really just said, you know, when you look back, you sit back like, okay, yep, it was this moment, it was this, and it was this, that actually began to propel you to where you all guys are headed now. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it was just the very first without going back too many decades we'll talk about <laughs> within the last few years because yeah. there are so many points that i could i could pick out but one of the main ones was i was 
working in contracting in financial services, quite well paid. You you're you're a contractor, so you 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 go you work through a company and you get a daily rate, and it's it's good. I actually preferred it to being an employee, mm -hmm. and so I was doing that at a bank, and、uh, so I was living in a lovely flat、uh, right on the harbour in Bristol in in the UK still, and、um, and my mum called me one morning, and I knew that she was sick. She doesn't really call in the morning.、Mm -hmm. I, looking back, I can just see she, maybe she woke up and she was scared, or she felt anxious, or she just wanted to hear somebody's voice. I can just imagine that was the thought process. So I'm getting ready for work, going around my nice apartment, and trying to get ready, and sort of thinking, "Oh my gosh, this phone call, and、uh, what about my? I need to get to work, <laughs> and what about the presentation,、yeah. and this and that." So I kind of dashed her off the phone because she was sort of saying, "Oh, oh, I don't really need to speak to you," and you know, she started then started apologising because maybe of my tone. So then I'm sitting at my desk afterwards, looking out the window in the afternoon after the presentation, and I'm thinking, "Ah."、Oh, You know when it feels like it's punched you in the belly, and slapped you around the face. And I thought, oh my God, it does not matter about the bank. The bank don't even care about anything to do with me.、Um, if I hadn't been here today, maybe something would have been postponed. Maybe somebody else could have talked to it, or it kept on going. something.、Mm -hmm. it would, it, yeah, it would have kept on rolling. But. You know, your mum can't do that. Your mum needs you, and、mm -hmm. it it wasn't just that one incident. It was just how that one just everyday occurrence, a simple phone call, just made me see my whole life. So I'm saying that this, by my actions, I'm saying that this job is the most important thing in my life, and that other things don't really matter. The things、yeah. that I I I would tell myself if you ask me, or I would tell you, are more important to me, and not. Proving important by my actions, so、um, so that was the time that I just thought I have to do something different, and that was what made me brave enough to actually do business because I thought I'm I, at that time I was forty five and I thought I have to do whatever I'm going to do now, and it made me brave. It gave me that fire in my belly. It made me go past all the objections in my mind that you don't know stuff, you don't know all of this, you don't know all of that. And that that was what made me really start、um, properly. I want to know why she's lying about her age. Like she's upset. <laughs> why she need to throw out that lie? That time I was forty five. It's like <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like、uh, okay, knocking on like the door of、uh, knocking、right、on the door like, of fifty、um, next year. Um, you look so, amazing, beautiful.、Yes. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank、wow. you. That's back, right?、It's、like she just threw that right, out there, like, didn't even、no. crack, right? Break character, just. No. <laughs> just when I was no. in my forties. No. No. So,、uh, what, what is next? What is next for you? And then we're going to see if there's any questions or anything that anyone has、um, that's attending the live. What, what's next? What next is that I believe in、um, now that I'm, I'm passionate about sharing that the whole mindset for transformation because we all have it in us. I know that I always had it there. If I had switched those things on sooner in my mind, I could have done it sooner.、Mm. And so I believe in believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer, and be a game changer by change the game in your life, become a leader in your life, change the game in your community, change the game in the world、um, through through the power of giving. So. So what we've done is we've connected our our property business with our giving, and there's a platform called B One G One where you can give whenever anything happens within your business. You're giving to your charities. You can choose your projects that you work with anywhere in the world, and we're supporting、uh, projects in Malawi and Zimbabwe and、uh, Ghana at the moment, which is we're helping people to set up their own businesses, and we're also helping people, children to go to school, and.、Um, What I would love to do in the future is to have our own projects that we can build and have our own foundations that we can build, and that that you know other people might be putting into. At the moment, we're contributing to other people's projects, but we'd love to have our our own projects.、Um, that that's one thing, and the other thing that really 
I want to do is partly by being an, an example is to continue to grow the businesses that we have. One is providing the property management. The other one is buying our, our own properties and the other one is teaching people. But it's teaching people that gives me the joy. And when I get people like Maria, who's a mom of three, who came on, she's doing it. She's an IT consultant. She has her whole family helping her with the business and she takes pictures of the properties with the children, you know, assisting and saying, mommy is a business woman and uh, things like that and um so it's just it's just to continue that and to to inspire others and to to be inspired to continue to grow okay i have one question how do you how did you be how are you able to partner with different um cities or countries in africa to be able to to develop because that's one of one of the things that we want to do but it seems it just seems like we're so far removed from each other. And yes. how does how do you do that? How do you even go about that? Yeah, well, it's um, I'd like to say because I'm, I'm amazing and a genius, but it's actually <laughs> <laughs> and it's she's actually, 45. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's actually a platform called b1g1 buy one give one dot com and it's designed so that businesses can make giving really easy get out and it also buy one yeah it also one. yeah it also tracks your giving um if you put in just b1g1.com uh, yeah I see it. uh yeah b1g1 it comes up and you can see there how you can register your business and then you can start giving to the charities that you choose. That's, a good That's idea. awesome. That's a great platform. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Okay, we won't read yeah. that. Right, we both read right. the website. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know, um, Sita, I got the inspiration to actually do that from, I was listening to a podcast, the, um, the, uh, that'll come back to me in a moment. Mm -hmm. But it was said about the 1% pledge because I had been thinking I'd give on and off before I we signed up with B1G1. I would just give on and off here and there and think, you know, when in the future I'm going to do this or that. But on this podcast that we're discussing, you can pledge 1%. It could be 1% of gross. It could be 1% of your salary. Even anybody who's listening from anywhere in any of the rich countries of the world can afford to give 1%. Percent. Right, right. And then you start there. And then we obviously started at much more than 1%. But just having permission mm -hmm. to start with 1% means that you can start giving now. straight away. Mm -hmm. And it just changes your whole mindset and the way you feel about life I think when you know that you're giving in that way exactly exactly that's, that's awesome mm. so I do we have any questions because I got other questions but I don't want to take away from any um viewer questions okay we have what's the best piece of advice that you would give to aspiring entrepreneurs Wow, that, that, that's, that's a, a big question. Brilliant, <laughs> that's a brilliant question. And I, the, the advice I would give is some people sometimes ask me, what's the number one indicator of success? What separates the people who are successful from the people who aren't successful? And I really was very good at not being successful. And now um, for most of my life and for a short period of time, you know, I'm now regarded in some spheres as successful. So the difference is that you stay on the pitch and you stay in the game. And the reason that you stay on the pitch and you stay in the game is because you believe mm. in yourself. And you don't necessarily believe that you're the best or that you're always going to win, but you believe that no matter what lumps, bumps, little detours, you're going to go around it, you're going to go over it, you're going to go through it. You cannot be a failure unless you stop. So as long as you keep going, you're successful. And most successful people have just failed more than the people who didn't try. Yeah. or the people who tried a couple of times and then said it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So the mindset is, uh, is, is basically persistence and stay, staying in the game long enough to win. That's so true. No matter how, no matter how hard it is. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be hard, you know, no matter what. If it's not hard, it's not worth it to me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another question? Um, your question. Do you have your question? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. That was good. <laughs> That's why I can't oh stand you. But go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> I love you, but can't stand you. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. So how... Um, Right, so you're working with your sister Nikki. Um, mm -hmm. Is Nikki baby sister or older, older sister? sister? Well, she's the baby sister, but lucky for me, she looks older because she's taller than me. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. Uh, I'm just going to throw a little bit of shade real right, quick. Right, right. <laughs> because she's taller than me as well. I think people always assume, because your siblings are one's taller, that the tallest yeah, one's the, the oldest, oldest one. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, so baby sister Nick. Okay. So baby sister Nick. So how, how has this... Um, number one, changed or enhanced your relationship between you and your sister? Um, and then number two, do you find it a challenge working with your sister? Yes, I do. <laughs> because... She didn't make it right. 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 <laughs> no, the I want you to be is, honest. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had... A, I've got a problem. You see, unfortunately, because my sibling, and it's a very bad quality for a sibling, is she's nearly always right. And I don't mean that she thinks she's always right. I just mean that she actually turns out to be nearly always right, which is very irritating. Annoying, yes. <laughs> she's also extremely detailed. So when I'm just giving her the headlines and just saying, da, 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 this is happening, that's happening, she wants to know all the details and what criteria it's based on and all of this. And she likes to really tell me what... Because yeah, I'm the same <laughs> She way. likes to really <laughs> tell me what to do. She likes to tell everybody what to do. She's on top of what everybody else is doing as well as what she's doing as well. And um, it, all of these things used to super irritate me. So we used to go for Christmas and then, um, you know, by day three, I'd be thinking, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> uh, so when we first decided to go into business together, my mum was really worried for us. <laughs> Not only that we were going last into business. minute together, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she was also worried because Nikki had, had a very high paying job um, previously. But at the time, she had taken a career break. Uh, I mean, a break, left the job and gone on holiday and to decide what to do. So I was just lucky that at that moment, I had this crazy idea and she was crazy enough to uh, come in with me. And so it was just the perfect timing. And what's happened since then is that I love all that crazy detail focus and getting into all the dots and T's and all of that. I love that now. I love her for that now because that's what makes our business work. So if I'm at the front doing the marketing, bringing the business in, she's at the back making it work and making sure that we deliver on those promises that we made to people. And I love having a partner who I totally trust, trust in every way. Me. And I suppose we've had to learn how to make each other feel good because I would make her feel bad because she would feel that I don't value everything that she's bringing to the table. Because the parts that I do, especially in things like the online course business, that's mainly me in terms of the marketing mm -hmm. and the revenues. And she would feel that her stuff in accounts and reconciling lines on <laughs> spreadsheets is not valued, especially because I would say things like, I don't want to be involved in your accounts. I'm not giving you my invoices. I'm not getting involved in that. And she would feel devalued. Yeah because I said that so I just had to find ways to be able to communicate with her in a way that makes her feel good and in a way where the way that I appreciate her comes over to her and is received by her um, and and she has to do the same for me so we've learned so much about we've learned so much about relationships and being being a team being yeah. there for each other when it's stressful when it's hard and you know even how to disagree um we've just learned so much in the last in the last few years wow i would agree i mean that that's similar she's described our marriage <laughs> 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 so. And we're still here. We've learned a lot. <laughs> so are yeah. there other siblings or is it just you two? It's just the two of us. And then I have my son, Alex, 
uh, who's who's now uh, 30. And um, Look, she he's lied just... Again. She lied again. <laughs> She's got a 30-year-old child. <laughs> yeah, re remember I started young because I, you know, had him when I was 18. <laughs> but Alex, you see, when it, I was bringing him up, I didn't know everything I know. Mm. So he's very cautious and very measured but he because we the last five years i was you know obviously encouraging him he's a sensible guy he's very considerate but he's been saving didn't want any input uh, and i love the fact that now we could put we could put in mm -hmm. financially we mm -hmm. could help him mm -hmm. i didn't want any financial input to buying the house he wanted to choose the house in the area that he can afford that he can afford the mortgage that is comfortable within his um people are so different aren't they oh, that's yeah. comfortable within his and so he's just bought his first house and he's had a baptism of fire because it's it's obviously we've been on lockdown so we've not been able to go he's he's about two hours away in in birmingham and and we're in wales and um he's been managing it on his own back to brick he's not a handy person uh, he now feels he's made the wrong decision you know work with the let him down and it, there was more work than he thought and has he made you know he's yeah <laughs> all he's got to do I'm is so tap, proud of him. tap into mom's expertise you see you yeah you're like you know baby all i just need you to do is ask me and i'll be right there <laughs> but i don't want to force myself on you that's an interesting uh situation to be in but i i, I sometimes i just like you just want to shake them a little bit but like it, it's okay to ask it's okay <laughs> Well, I think what I've done is, uh, or what's happened now is, he used to feel that he needs to stand on his feet and, you know, be independent. And I, I've gradually indoctrinated him over a period of time that it's team Taylor, you know, mm -hmm. it, we're a team. Yeah. So you're not on your own. Nobody's doing it on their own. Richard Branson's not doing it on his own. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doing it on their own. We're a team. You know, it's, it's as much a joy for us to give and to you give get to and, give right. back to other people, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So... Awesome. That's hard. It takes time. Yes. It does. But she still is. He's he's thirty. <laughs> like still. I mean, he, he he just he wants to. Right. I mean, it's obvious that he you know he sees his mom's and his aunt's success. Success and strength. And right? he's he like, I want to measure up. But he's like, okay. But they didn't get there by themselves. I need to. He just, okay. I'll he stop. just he just needs to. It'll he, come around in time. It'll come around because what he's learning now. The fire that he's feeling will help him grow significantly mm -hmm. yeah. so that when when there is a point in time where he says, hey, mom, I want to do something a little bit bigger than what was in my comfort zone. Yes, he knows that he can handle it. But all mom has to do is add just a little bit of seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he can run full run blast like mm -hmm. and what he will grow from it, it. So that's where he's at, you know. And it's it's already happening because I can see with the questions he's up he's he's asking me, yeah. it's about the mindset, yes. and he's he's asking me those questions. So I'm not trying to foist it all onto him because I get so excited sometimes, <laughs> but he can see how I was, mm -hmm. and how I am now. He mm -hmm. can he can see it. So he he wants to take himself as well through you know not the same journey. Everyone's got their own journey, but he wants to move forward and it's it's so incredible uh it's so incredible for, for me to be able to be a part of it and help 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 with that well and that's the beauty of it right so he'll you know your your journey may have taken right 10 to 15 years yes. right yeah and but for the fact that he's able to see it his journey will take yeah two three years yes right? and, and now you begin to see oh Okay, from all the, the 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 hiccups and all the the, you know, me stubbing my toe on that rock, mm -hmm. right? He now compartmentalizes it and be able to push forward in a mm -hmm. shorter period of time. And mm -hmm. to me, that's I mean, as that's a parent, awesome. that's that's fulfilling. Right, that's in the itself. that's the glory be able to sit yeah. and watch. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about yeah. him. He'd be all right. I don't, I don't think she worried about him. <laughs> 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 I think he's, she's like, you know, he's got it. He's good at. And I'm just, I'm just waiting for right. those doors to open when he's ready to open those doors to ask mom for help. Of course, if I was there, I'd be asked, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> I need this right here, Ma. Right, right, Ma. <laughs> you got somebody that can do this? <laughs> um, I, 
had another question. Mm. You wanted to come back to you? I don't know. Because I got a question. Co- okay, go ahead. So how has, I mean, as, it, as this, exp- you know, has impacted the globe? COVID has, right. Yeah. From, like, from our side of things, um, being an e-commerce company, um, our, our major hiccup has been our supply chain. Yeah. Um, whether our manufacturer had a case of COVID and they had to shut down for a period of, for a week, right, to, to clean and, 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 and to, um, what do they call it, to sanitize, sanitize and so forth, mm-hmm. right, or a packaging company, right? And so that's been our biggest hiccup for us over the last four to six months. How has it been for you as a property management company and so forth? Yeah. How, how has COVID impacted you that way? Yeah, well, COVID has been a lesson as well because at the beginning of it, you get that fear, mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, what is happening? I cannot believe, is this the world? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is this really happening? And, and And then I just went straight into, okay, it is happening what 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 can we do how can we get through this or what what how can how long can we last if things get really bad because the thing with that business is we pay guaranteed rent to the landlords that's why they came with us yeah Mm -hmm. so now what what happens oh my goodness well but that wasn't the although that wasn't the issue because our government i think it happened in america as well said that um the the government's paying people 80 percent of their salary Mm -hmm. if they're fur Oh no. No. Yeah, so that that's that's one of the, the differences between the states and UK. Mm-hmm. That your your government and paying eighty percent of eighty percent of folks' salary um was not here. Up to a certain amount. Up yeah. to a certain amount. But it's a decent livable amount. Not here. <laughs> but either way. But go ahead. <laughs> Another reason so, to move to so, the UK, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> the government's paying 80% of people's salary if they're furloughed. So if they are employed and their employer puts them on furlough rather than making them redundant. And the second thing the government did is they made universal credit, which is the, the benefit for unemployed people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they made it available to more people. So if you've been made unemployed as a result of COVID, then you can apply for the universal credit. And then it's about, it's a much smaller amount that they get weekly, okay. but they increase the amount that people get and they increase the eligibility so more people can get it. So actually people now have more protections if they're made unemployed than they had before. So we weren't worried about that because we could just say to people, if they lose their job, just apply for the universal mm-hmm. credit. It's more than enough to cover your house share rent. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that wasn't the issue. What the issue was, was that a lot of our people are young professionals. So they were going to move back to their parents or mm. they're now working from home or whatever. And all of those gaps now turning up in all the houses, mm, mm-hmm. we can't fill. And our business model really, that's where the little bit of magic happens mm. is that we fill all the rooms quickly. We keep the properties well kept so that people always want to come to our properties. So then we started getting gaps in our revenue, mm-hmm. uh, about 20%. And But we m- could manage with that. We knew that we could manage with that for a few months. And luckily, it then opened up again. And the demand has come back. We're now filling those gaps. We're not quite back to where we were, yeah. but in the next few weeks we'll get back. And but the lessons in it were: we a we decided how can we be exceptional through this? How can we make everybody feel that they're glad that they were in it with us? Yeah. And at the end of it, we can all reflect back and look back and say, "Yeah, I'm proud of how we came through this." So what we did was we, you know, there was a lot of communications with all the housemates to let them know the supports that were in place for them, and a lot of communications right from the beginning with the landlords to let them know that, yeah, we are facing this challenge. Our commitment is to pay you for as long as we can. We don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how long, but we're going to communicate with you every month and let you know what's happening. But we just want you to know that we're committed to do this for as long as we can. And if we can't, we're going to come to you and talk to you about it. Um, and, And we're really proud that we were able to pay all of their rents and still are paying all of the rents that were due all the time on time for across the whole um across the whole period so uh, it's just like you were saying before i feel like 
I, you know, we can we can manage any problem because there's people out there to help, you know, and and we've obviously got our own minds to mm-hmm. think about to think to think about to think about it. So so hopefully it's not going to lock down again, please. Oh, yeah. so, please. <laughs> <laughs> so so true. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Yes. So was there anything else online? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. How are we on time? Um, we've got two minutes. Oh, okay. So, anything in the last two minutes that you want um, our listeners to know? Yeah. Um, it, it, well, I, I would like to inspire you if you are in business or if you're starting in business to you know, just do it because that's the thing at the end of life, nobody regrets the things that they tried. They regret the things that they, they didn't try. And I would love it if you're interested in any of the things that, you know, I've been talking about today. Um, we have, a, I have a, a rents to rent success podcast, which talks about how to get started in this real estate. And it's got the success stories, uh, the rent to rent rock stars about ordinary people who have done the same thing and are doing the same thing. Um, and, and there's a website, rent to rent success.com. If you want to get in touch with me or find out more about what we're doing and our main property business is at hmoheaven.co.uk. If you want to see the before and afters of the properties and, and things like that. Perfect. Perfect. And the blog is, is accessible off of the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The blog, there's YouTube videos, there's a podcast, there's a book coming out later this year. So awesome. it's all, it's all, it's all there on the website. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. So next time we get to the UK. Yep. Or not next time. When we get, when to, we the get UK, to the UK, UK, we have to do dinner. I would love that. My sister would love to meet you guys and she'll, she'll empathize with, uh, <laughs> Oh, wow. With the relationship. With, with one of you. Right. With one of you. She'll empathize with one of you. <laughs> me and you got it here. It's the other yeah. one with like Excel charts that just make me this kind of cringe. But <laughs> thank you so much for finding us and being on our podcast. This is really, really um, oh, yeah, this was fabulous. inspirational. This was it's yeah. really inspirational. And it's, it's, it's getting things churning in the head. It's like, okay. I hope for other people, it's like, you know what? I think I can do that. I can make, I can take that business model. I can learn from her and I can do the same and be able to get myself in a position that, um, you know, helps me and my family and where I can give back to the community. Oh yeah. Yep. So you're going to take us out? Yep. I'll take us out. So Miss Stephanie, we appreciate it so much having you. Um, and glad you were able to, to be with us from across the pond, as they say. Is that what they say? They do say that across the pond. See? (laughs) I would say over there. (laughs) (laughs) And hopefully our paths will cross again. And um, as we always say in parting, take care. Billy, um, because I was about to say thank you again, Stephanie. But thank you again, Stephanie. (laughs) But be blessed. And be a blessing. Thank (laughs) you. Take care. Bye-bye.